Welcome back, everyone, to INE's uh, CCIE Data Center Nexus Switching Camp. And we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about NXOS security. Now, because of the time, we'll probably spend a little bit of time right now, and we will uh, wrap up the rest of the security in the morning. Uh, we were, certainly won't get to all the topics, but we will uh, go over a number of them tonight. So taking a look at our slide deck to begin with, we're gonna take a look at AAA, or authentication, authorization, and accounting. And we're primarily gonna go into the first two, authentication and authorization. So just as a basic uh, kind of refresher, primer, uh, the, there's a difference between authentication, or what is seen in the debugs as AuthC, and authorization, which isn't showing up in the parentheses here, but as uh, AuthZ. So authentication tells me, or tells really the server, who I am as I'm trying to log in. So for instance, that Mark Snow is trying to log in to uh, either a network device, gain access to a network device, or some sort of other resource. Uh, authorization, however, of course, is really the server giving me authorization what I'm allowed to do on a particular network device, or as we'll see later in the case of TrustSec, uh, to a particular resource on the network in the data center like a server or a group of servers. So am I allowed to make a change to an interface, for instance, yes or no? We'll see that there are certainly two different types of users. We have the local user database within the NXOS, and we're going to take a look uh, a little bit more in depth at something called RBAC, or role-based access control. And we will also take a look at radius-based users. Now, NXOS does support uh, TACAX Plus. Radius is enabled by default, really, but we can also use TACAX if we still want to use that sort of a uh, legacy environment or if we have particular shell command uh, type things that we want to have pushed down from a TACAX server. So, for instance, with on a radius, one of the things to keep in mind is that e if I switch over from, or switch to, from a default VDC on a Nexus 7K uh, specifically, to a sub or non-default VDC, that the network admin role assumes the VDC admin role upon switch to, as well as the network operator assumes the VDC operator. Now this can be really useful if you happen to lock yourself out of a particular VDC with AAA authentication. So maybe you enable AAA authentication to a radius server, as we'll do in a moment, and you try to authenticate, and you haven't necessarily provided the right level of role access, then you could certainly lock yourself out. A backdoor to that is being able to go to the, uh, the default VDC and log in. So uh, the moral is basically be very careful when you're working in the default VDC and authenticating remotely. Make sure you don't lock yourself out there or else then you'll be uh, stuck in some sort of password recovery situation where you'll need to use that. So looking next at role-based access control, and as soon as we cover a couple of these topics, we're gonna dive into the interface and actually begin uh, doing user-based authentication uh, and RBAC. So with RBAC, we have, this is really, a, a, uses a multi-level access for local users. It also can be used as, uh, with a radius server as well. But this limits the commands that can be run by a particular user in the Nexus OS platform. As I mentioned, it can be handed down from Radius, and basically it limits the domain in which a user can make changes. It not only limits commands, possibly, but it also can limit the overall domain. So some examples of the domain it can limit, it can restrict access to uh, changes and commands only within particular VRFs, also within particular VLANs or even specific interfaces. So we can really use RBAC to become very granular with, let's say, maybe a, a shared tenancy environment. Obviously, VDCs would be the ultimate uh, kind of distinction or, or uh, delineation between customers and environment. But if we don't want to give everyone their own VDC or we don't really have those resources available, we can still use uh, you know, maybe one particular 
network admin should only have access to customer A, and really they only have this set number of VLANs or VRFs uh, or even interfaces, and we can restrict someone to those particular interfaces. Also, before we take a look at the command line, we want to take a look at SNMP version 3, because this really falls right in line with users. So the command syntax is fairly similar to SNMP version 2 with the addition of cryptographic security. So the largest issue with SNMP version 1 and 2 was really that there, were, there was really no uh, security. So they used nothing more than a very simple clear text password, uh, basically known as the community string. And with the SNMP v3 message, these contain security parameters which are encoded uh, as an octet string. So we have the introduction of confidentiality. Our packets are encrypted to prevent snooping from an unauthorized source. Uh, integrity, we have message integrity to ensure that the packet arrives where it should. It's not been tampered in transit and even an optional replay protection, as well as authentication. So who specifically is making the request or response? 